Hi, I'm Ann Frazier, and welcome to another edition of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. Today, I'm sitting with my new friend, um, Dr. Craig Lee, and he is with I Move PT, which is out of Kansas City. It's a physical therapy company, correct? That's correct. All right. Tell me a little bit about um, how you got started in physical therapy and how long you've been in it and so forth. Sure. So I had a knee injury when I was a junior in high school. And so as a result of that, I spent some time seeing an orthopedist and working with a physical therapist. And mm -hmm. so that um, created that uh, desire for me to, to pursue that later on. I didn't do it immediately, but, um, but I did eventually um, and have been a PT for 27 years now. Very good. Very good. And so, and in Can in the Kansas City area, you serve both Kansas and Missouri sides? That is correct. My second therapist lives in Overland Park and I live on the east side, so we have the city covered. Excellent. Excellent. And so you um, primarily see senior citizens, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we participate with Medicare, traditional Medicare, and so our primary um, audience is, medic is senior citizens. Um, we do have opportunities with the younger population as well, but we do primarily serve seniors. Okay. So that's 65 and above. That's correct. Okay, wonderful. I appreciate you being on our podcast today. I always want to explore something with the thought that we're going to bring, keep bringing this back to what the purpose of this podcast is, which is um, prevention, early detection. Um, if somebody does start having cognitive issues, what are some things they can do to either slow down, stop, or reverse uh, those issues? So um, in physical therapy, do you see people who have cognition issues? And if so... Is that different in the physical therapy world than someone who fully has their cognition? Yes, we absolutely do work with folks who have cognitive issues. Um, many times we see that as a result of, maybe it's, it's a result of a, a stroke or something like that, um, but also just the, the normal cognitive decline that does happen with age. And the way we probably see it the most frequent is difficulty following instructions or not retaining information or not following through with instructions or programming that we've been giving them. And so that's a first sign usually that, that somebody maybe has had some or is experiencing some type of cognitive decline. Okay. And you, during physical, I've had physical therapy in my life. So during physical therapy, you kind of get to know your clients um, really well. You chit chat with them. You talk to them about their family or those types of things. So is that also an area where you'll see people uh, having those difficulties, maybe not being able to recall names of grandchildren or something like that? Do you see it in that realm as well? Yes. One of the, uh, one of the things that I ask our staff to do is, is to be able to give me five, and that would be five specific personal details about one of our patients. That might be, you know, spouse's name or job or retirement or grandchildren or pets or things, they, places they like to travel. Um, and so we do talk about those things with the patients because we're, we are carrying on a conversation. We see patients typically an hour, 45 minutes to an hour at a time and two to three times a week. So we do spend quite a bit of time with them, and, and that gives us that opportunity to learn about them. And so, yes, if they start to stumble with recall or things like that. We, we try to incorporate some of that even into our programming, just maybe giving them a few words at the beginning of the treatment and asking them to remember them at the end or partway through so mm -hmm. that they are working on some re recall or, or to complete um, a cognitive task while they're doing a physical activity so that we're combining both of those together. Excellent. Excellent. So have you had any instances where you have been working with a client and you start noticing that they're having maybe some cognitive issues? Yes, I have. Um, typically, I'd like to approach either if there's a caregiver or a family member or put even potentially the referring physician to make sure we're identifying that uh, to see if there are next steps or what next steps might be available for that patient. Okay. Because, yeah, when, when I know in my family history, if somebody's around someone and they're having cognitive issues, it's kind of slow. It's it's goes on for a long time just slowly. And sometimes people don't really realize or they'll say, oh, they're just getting older, this is normal. But for someone like you that you're seeing someone maybe only once a week or once every other week or so forth, um, that might be more evident to you just if you start seeing major jumps in their their cognitive issues or, or their behaviors of some sort. Yes, I, I believe that's true. And, and we do see that because if we, we do see them frequently, but we're not around them 24 seven, like family members might mm -hmm. be. And so, yes, it's easy to excuse some of those things um, versus when we see them on a less frequent basis, we might pick up on that a, um, a little more um, timely or, or notice those things and then be willing to have that conversation to start figuring out, is there something that we can do to help this person? 
Excellent. So then let's go to the other side of things where you know that somebody has some cognitive issues and you're seeing them for certain reasons. Is there some things in physical therapy that can help someone with their cognition through the exercises and the things that you do? Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that we have learned um, that is, can be a causative factor for cognitive decline is blood flow. And so moderate exercise is a great thing that patients can be doing. Um, we can have them uh, I would encourage them to do moderate exercise, maybe walking or bicycling, or if they like to swim or to dance or whatever, something that keeps them active um, at least 150 minutes a week, and then incorporating, and it may be our session that, that covers this part of it, but doing some weight lifting or weight training once or twice a week as well. Right. Excellent. So um, if someone, what are some other things that you see, um, I know of just a couple but what are some of the things that you see when, uh, for instance, the change of flooring? So a lot of times people who are having cognitive issues, if a wood floor butts up against a tile floor, then the depth perception, you might see them pick their leg up and try to step over even though it's a flat surface through. Is, is there other things that you see that you can work on with seniors um, that are showing cognitive issues? Are there other things that you see um, in your therapy that kind of is a tail sign? Um, I'm not sure about a, a tail sign, but that is one. Um, and we certainly work to help overcome that. Uh, we want to try to prevent um, falls. Uh, people who have any type of aging may are at risk for falls, greater risk for falls. I'm, I'm starting to get that way. Um, unfortunately, my mom even had a fall this week um, with, a, with a minor injury. She'll be fine. Um, but I encourage people to not wait until those things are happening, you know, or when the first one happens, then it's the time to address it. Because like everything else, the longer we let it go, the, the more difficult it is to treat or the more difficult it is to try to um, recover from some of those things. Um, so yes, but we would work on things like stepping and uh, working on going up and down steps or working on encouragement. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of ataxia. They, they, the motor planning of taking that next step isn't there. So sometimes it can be a cue, whether that's a verbal cue, uh, just encourage them or asking them to, to take a longer step or a, a higher step. Or sometimes it is giving them some kind of physical cue. Um, I was teasing a patient just this week uh, where if I put my foot in front of hers, she's picks up her foot and takes a nice step. But many times if it's not there, she hesitates and, and she likes to sew. So I told her, I said, you need to sew uh, a foot, you know, so I can just put it on a stick and hold it down there in front of you. So, but yeah, those, those are some things that we might, or strategies we might use to, um, to help patients deal with those situations as they encounter them. Right. Cause in, in, uh, Alzheimer's or cognitive decline, some of the things that make that go qu quicker would be being sedentary mm -hmm. and, and not being able to get up and around. Um, and then social aspect as well. So just having um, someone who is coming in, talking with them, someone new, different, who's asking them different questions and requiring them to do other things, that's also helpful, right? That's true. Um, and that's a concern of me because our business is a mobile physical therapy business. So we are going into the home and seeing these patients. And so we don't want to contribute to their social isolationism. We want to be part of that social, re you know, they may not have a lot of social connection. We may be the only social connection that they have. And so, again, we are trying to draw some of those experiences out or those conversations uh, with our patients. Um, but we also are encouraging them um, to try to do the prevention side early. You know, we can prevent some of this by maintaining our health. Anyone who has a, a primary uh, long-term health condition, that might be high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, lung diseases of any kind, those things, they are predisposed then to a cognitive decline. Um, so if we can take those steps now, remain active, prevent some of those secondary health conditions, and maintain some social contact, uh, we, we are doing as much as we can or many things that we can to prevent that, that cognitive decline later in life. That's excellent. That's excellent. Good. What have we not talked about today that you would like to cover as far as your company, what you do, and, and anything that you want people to know about? Um, I would share a couple things. Um, one, you know, we, as I mentioned, we do work primarily with seniors and, 
and this may get a bit out of your, your audience, but it may be a family member listening. And so my second therapist does do pelvic floor therapy, pelvic health therapy. Uh, that's very important for, for women. Um, and that can prevent some of those health issues later on in life as well. So I always like to, to bring that up. Um, and secondly, again, as I mentioned earlier, just letting people know that many of you, just as you had described, have gone to physical therapy and you have to drive to the clinic or somebody has to come pick you up if transportation is an issue and then you're seen at the clinic, you know, maybe it's you and a therapist, might be you and a therapist and another patient. So for, for me, the, the goal of, of starting I Move PT was to deliver the services that I've been doing in the clinic for the past 15 plus years and deliver it in the patient's home, deliver it for a full hour with my attention only and save you know families some of that opportunity or that, that difficulty that can come with transportation, um, having to take off work, those kind of things to transport a family member. So um, those are the things I would say that I would share about the company. Um, and then maybe wrapping up a little bit about our conversation is just, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, Cognitive decline typically starts at age 65. Uh, those who reach age 85, there's a 50% chance, so one in two, that you're going to experience some type of cognitive decline. So if we can do any prevention ahead of time, it, it's a very, it's, it's hard to do sometimes, but it's creating the habit of exercising first. And so I would tell people, begin to exercise and do it consistently. Um, research will tell us that it takes at least 66 days to, to create a new habit and that that's an average somewhere between 20 and 200 and some days is, is what it might take. So if you can create the habit of just exercising, then you can begin to vary that exercise a little bit after, after two to three months. So it's something that you enjoy, but to, to take those steps every day, because it's those little steps we take now that build over time that will prevent or have the greatest opportunity to prevent cognitive decline later in our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's all good information. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll look forward to working with you in the future. And it, you know about our gala and we have a lot of other activities. So if you or any of our listeners, if you guys are interested in some of the other things that we have going besides our podcast and our gala, we've got other things going on um, that you can get involved in. You can go to our website, which is thenightofhope.com. So thanks for being here. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet you. And we will see you guys next time for another edition of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. Thanks.